Welcome, welcome everybody to our latest Bedrock webinar. It's entitled Best Practice for End User Device Management. Uh, it's co-hosted by uh, Adam Plevin and Mark Flynn. Adam, do you want to just say a quick hi? Hello, hello. Thanks, Adam. Uh, today, let's clip on to the first slide. So today, we're going to show how easy it is to rapidly roll out new devices to users, be they in your office or home workers, while at the same time, yeah, not compromising the security of your business. You'll get an introduction to how you can use Azure AD, Microsoft 365 Endpoint Manager, Intune Autopilot, and third-party tools such as ConnectWise Automate to deploy and manage the full life cycle of your distributed end user device estate. Today is meant to be a practical session to help you get on and do it yourself, or equally, you could reach out to us to take advantage of our secret source and experience to help you do it for you. Now, don't forget, if you have any questions, we'd love some questions today, please post them in the Q&A top, top right hand side of the screen. Let's take a quick look at the agenda. Today, yep, yeah, is demonstration uh, dominant. Uh, and Adam's gonna take us through, he's got a challenge. He's got 20 minutes in which to deploy, uh, fully deploy a box fresh Dell laptop to a new user. Let's see whether he can meet that challenge. Now, during this demonstration, it's video driven, but we want there to be an overlay of live questions. Now, I've got a whole bunch of questions that I always get asked about end user device management, Microsoft 365 Endpoint Manager. So if we get no questions, I'll use those that I get frequently asked. But treat this, yeah, as I would say free consultancy. So post your questions, top right hand corner. Let's see what uh, what, what what you'd like to know more about. It'd be wrong of me. Uh, let's go back to the agenda. It'd be wrong of me not to say a few words about better, so I'll take advantage of that. I'm going to bring some context today before we drop into the uh, demonstration. Uh, just look at the flow of rolling up a new device. And obviously, we've got a bit of a wrap up coming as well. OK, as I said, it would be wrong of me not to say a few words about Bedrock. Now, Bedrock is a new breed of IT managed service partner. Yes, we can look after all of your IT 24-7 from the device on your desktop to the services you consume in the cloud. And in many cases, we simply look after discrete elements of a client's IT uh, estate. But what we pride ourselves on is our strategic capabilities that will help ensure your people are the best they possibly can, helping you make the most of your investment in IT, ensuring your IT strategy you have today isn't something that belongs in the arc in 18 months down the line. So let me paint a picture. As a result of COVID, the workplace is evolving rapidly and employees have new expectations for work and how it should get done. Think about how we interact with technology at home, how we monitor our heating, our fire alarms, home security cameras and doorbells. We are used to being able to connect to these application devices from wherever and communicate with them the same we would when we're at home. We have subscriptions for Netflix, Prime and Now TV and take those subscriptions wherever we go and consume on any device that we want. So why shouldn't we be able to do this with work? Now, business leaders need to embrace the changes occurring at home and create a new post-COVID IT strategy, which means one, having always on access to files and data, two, have the flexibility to work from wherever, whenever, three, collaborate in real time with colleagues, customers and partners and four. And finally, and most important, at all times, be secure. So if we're in a bit of a muddle, I need some direction how best to deliver this new post COVID IT strategy or perhaps just need help with one discrete element of this new world of work, then it'd be great to chat. And of course, today we're going to share with you part of this new way of working. Let's move on and give some context to uh, the demonstration that Adam's going to take us through. Now, traditionally, we would roll out new PCs uh, 
the, the, the traditionally rolling out new PCs or refreshing your existing state was a painful, costly and time consuming experience. We all know about having to create, maintain gold images and various versions of that. Now that's no longer the case. Now with Microsoft 365 Endpoint Manager with Intune and Autopilot, it is greatly simplified. From unboxing that brand new laptop, powering it on, the computer just knows who you are and what's needed to get you up and running within just a few clicks. Now with Intune and Autopilot, there is no need to re-image the device. You can easily morph the windows that comes pre-installed on your new Dell laptop into a machine that is fully compliant with your organization's security standards while at the same time quickly provisioning the user with the apps they need access to. Your IT department doesn't have to touch these machines any longer. This is a true cloud provisioning service. Now, the process involves a number of steps, and I've got them on the slide there, steps one through to seven. I'm just going to quickly walk through these. So let's assume with step one, let's assume your IT department has built your end user device management platform using Microsoft 365 Endpoint Manager, Intune and Autopilot and other third party tools you will need to manage your end user devices. At step two, you purchase your new devices and your hardware vendor will automatically register the device into the Microsoft Autopilot service. Step three, once that's done, your organization can claim ownership of the device, set up uh, the deployment configuration you want and request shipment to your users. Step five, the user just unboxes the machine, powers it on, connects it to the network. The Windows 10 machine will then automatically call home and check whether that device has been registered to a particular organization. If it finds it, it'll come back and interrupt the out of the box experience and present the user with the Windows Autopilot registration page, asking you for your username and password, or asking the user for that. It then enrolls the user and device into Intune, which has all the profile information for that user. The profile contains the policy, settings, applications, and anything that is needed to transform that device into the corporate device that user requires. On completion of the enrollment, Intune pushes the policy, settings, and applications down to that device. Let's move on to step six. For the duration that device is used by the user, it will be kept up to date and secure automatically using uh, Microsoft 365 Endpoint Manager. And in our case, because it has a lot of value, is ConnectWise Automate. Step seven, you will also use Windows Autopilot and Into to repurpose devices. For example, if a user changes role or the device gets handed on to a new user, the device gets wiped or could get wiped, shipped to the new user and reprovisioned as detailed in that kind of loop going from steps four through to six. OK, just a footnote, I think just for clarification, there seems to be some misconception and misunderstanding about what Autopilot actually does. In summary, all Autopilot does is funnel that box fresh PC that has been shipped to user into a managed state which is controlled by Intune. Autopilot does not actually install any application. It doesn't configure your device. Autopilot only guides you or guides that device into a money state. Pretty simple, really. Intune does all the heavy lifting. Super. Some context. Anyway, demo. Adam's got a challenge, needs to roll out a brand new Boxfresh laptop in 20 minutes. Can he do it? Now, as I said, if you've got any questions, post them uh, in the top right hand corner. Be greedy. This is free consultancy time because there's going to be time when we can answer your questions during this period where we're rolling up a box fresh PC. So let's get on with it. Let's roll the video and see where it all hangs together, see whether Adam can uh, do the business. OK, let's do this. How fast and how easy can we make deploying laptops to end users? So bottom left hand corner, you see a brand new box fresh laptop. It's got Windows 10 Pro installed as it came from the factory. Nothing else done to it. Bottom right hand side, you see my laptop with the stopwatch on it. Top right hand side, you see our RMM console interface. 
and on the top left hand side you see the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Windows Enrollment screen and that's where we're going to look at some settings before we start out. So if we have a quick look at the list of devices that are registered with Autopilot, the top one is the one we're interested in, the Dell Latitude 3410. You can see it's got a group tag assigned, and that is what's used to generate um, <clears throat> auto enrollment um, in dynamic uh, groups within the system. And then the policies and the software, etc., are deployed relative to that group tag. What is also uh, set here is if we look, the device is allocated to a person as well, to a user account so that when we're logging into the device, it knows who to expect, which is really quite cool. So the things to look at, we have a number of deployment profiles, and these can be configured to do things like uh, hybrid join devices, um, add them to specific domains, um, add them to specific OUs within that domain. Um, but we can also configure them up to just be straight Azure AD join devices. Um, we, there are a number of settings in there that we can tweak to uh, alter the way that things deploy. Um, and we then can look at <clears throat> compliance policies. And these are the, um, the policies that the devices must adhere to, to be marked as compliant. Only compliant device can be set so that only compliant devices can access specific types of information or even access the system as a whole. Um, and these are baselines so we can go, it must have a password installed, it must have a PIN number of a certain company complication, it must be encrypted. Those types of settings we can set in here. We then go into conditional access and this takes those compliance policies and takes it to the next level. So it's um, who can access what data on what device from where. Um, so basically if I'm on a personal computer and I'm at home and I want to use Outlook to get to my emails, we can block that on here, but we can allow access to it via the web browser, but still block the downloading of files. Um, it, it's quite granular, there's a lot we can do in there. Uh, and then we have the configuration profile. So these are the settings that we set in each of the areas. Um, and we can do things like force OneDrive to sign in um, to the tenant and sync the desktop, my pictures and my documents folders. Um, we can pre-allocate Wi-Fi passwords. We can pre-allocate local user accounts um, and do things like configure desktop backgrounds, so those kinds of things. The type of thing that would normally done would be done with group policy. Um, and we also have our list of applications this is our test tenant. So these are all the applications that we have been testing deployment of. And you can see there's a lot in here that we have done and confirmed that we can get to work correctly. Things like Zoom, things like um, the full version of Office, uh, things like Google Chrome and applications and the configuration settings can be set per device and per user, depending on um, what we want and what the requirement is. Um, the device we're going to work on today will have a couple of apps installed. Uh, so let's go, let's have a look. Devices, Windows, Windows enrollment, and there we go. Okay, so shall we do this? Yes, let's, I hear you say. So. Start the stopwatch and I'll start the PC off. Whilst that's doing that, I will take you through how to get a device into the autopilot devices list. There are two methods. You can either um, register it via the supplier. So for instance, Dell, on when you go to the ordering page, there is an autopilot section on the auto ordering page and you can put in your tenant ID, you give them all the permissions um, and it will um, automatically um, 
put the details into the system here. If you can't do that through your supplier, then you can do it manually. Um, you get hold of the device um, and as it's doing its initial setup, there is a way of breaking into it um, and accessing the hardware ID that you need to um, implement into the system to put the devices in there. So this isn't restricted to just the big manufacturers. So we can see the laptop bottom left hand side is going through a setup process. Um, we'll just wait for it to get to the next stage. And there we were. We're one minute 30 in and we're ready to log in. Um, you can see uh, we've got some bedrock branding. It knows who the machine is going to. Um, you can see that it knows the company, the tenant that we're associated with. The text that's on the screen can be modified. So let's log in. And there we go. What it'll do now is it pulls down some of the base config, it talks to the um, endpoint manager system and it'll go through three stages. One is the basic uh, registering of the device, then it'll do the configuration of the device. Here we go, the three stages. It'll do the configuration of the device. As I said earlier, the properties, the settings, the applications can be applied to the device and to the user. So it'll go through the device setup, then it'll change its context. It'll do what looks like a reboot, but it's just changing context. And then it'll go through the account setup, which is the user setup. So we'll wait for it to go through these steps. Adam, while it's waiting to go through those steps, uh, you pre-allocated the machine to a user, to Adam Raylon, and that's just prompting the user for a password. Could you have left that uh, blank, the username blank? For example, I might be shipping 10 machines, 10 devices to a location, first come, first serve for the first place in the office. I don't want to pre-allocate, it just gets a little bit more administrative complex. Is that possible? Yeah, of course. Um, of course it is. Um, the only consideration around that is um, the software deployments, um, whether the software is assigned uh, to the user or to the machine. Um, if you assign it to a, a machine and you um, it, it switches department, for instance, um, it, you, you then have to go back and rejig that afterwards. But yes, it's entirely doable. doable. Excellent. OK. So the device preparation is complete. We're now on to device setup. I'll show you the details. You can see the stuff it's going to do. Installing two applications at the device level, and then there'll be another application to do at the account level. And this is where I said it would switch context. And now we're doing the user account setup. Adam, got some more questions for you while it's, yeah. while it's uh, trending forward. Yeah. Okay, we've looked at, we're looking at a, deploying a box fresh machine, yeah? What if we want to do something similar with an existing, we've got an estate out there, yeah? We just want to refresh, use this same approach. Is that possible with those machines out in the field? Yes, yes, of course it is. Um, so the, there are there are essentially two methods that I'd go through um, uh, and think about when doing this. Um, the first step on all of them is getting those hardware IDs. 
um, the bit the manufacturer does or the bit that you do at the beginning, um, it, it's, a, uh, it's a, a small couple of command lines to extract the hardware ID from the device and then we import it into the Intune system. That way, no matter how the device then um, reboots and initiates a, a fresh install, um, it will then it's then registered with the system and it will go through. Um, so that can be done. Um, so you do that, the, you grab the hardware ID and then you wipe the machine in whichever which way that you'd like to wipe it. So you can either do a factory reset, um, which will include all the uh, specific drivers for the device, um, or you can reboot, you can boot off a USB stick and do a really clean install of Windows 10, no bloatware, no drivers, no nothing. Um, and again, it'll it will just work when it reaches that stage in the setup. It will um, it will pick up the autopilot and go through. Um, so yeah, so it, it's entirely possible to do it on existing machines. Excellent. Okay, got another question for you. What operating systems and devices does this support? Because we want to fully control these devices using Intune, yeah, our mobile device management. So what flavors of Windows does it support? So it's Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Enterprise. Um, 10 Home can be supported by Intune, but only in a very limited fashion. Um, this this needs to be done on Windows 10 Pro. Okay, and what what about Macs? Oh no, that you can you can manage some settings within Macs. You can't do this autopilot piece with a Mac, but you can manage some settings. You can manage some compliance bits and pieces and those kinds of things um, to make sure that you've got compliant devices that they like they're encrypted and that kind of stuff. OK, all right, cool. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if we've got any questions coming through in Q&A, but I've got another one for you. Uh, we, we, top right hand corner, you've introduced ConnectWise Automate. Now, I would have thought that through a combination of Microsoft 365 uh, Endpoint Manager, uh, Intune and Autopilot, I'd have all the software solutions put an end user device management platform together. But obviously, we also include ConnectWise Automate. Why, why do we need that, do you think? It gives us an extra layer. Um, it gives us the ability to, because it installs an agent on the machine, it gets, it gives us the ability to monitor that machine. Um, it's things like uh, hardware monitoring, log monitoring, um, being proactive. Um, we can, uh, for instance, set up monitors that flag us if the C drives getting uh, the, the main drive is getting too used and if it reaches say five percent free space it'll let us know and it can do that set as a, a timer as well so it's if it's at less than five percent for two days it's not somebody's copied something on there and copying it off again um, it's actually uh, a bigger problem and we can then contact the end user um, in advance of them actually realizing there's a problem um, and we can do we can monitor all sorts of stuff um, ICPU usage, disk usage, um, and any, any other kind of hidden hardware errors and um, smart drive errors for hard drives. We can monitor all of that and be proactive around it. And that's the bit that Intune and the uh, Endpoint Manager system can't do. So for example, then if uh, uh, there's a couple of situations where we've deployed this, so uh, 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 and we've managed, for example, uh, uh, you know, in, especially in a sales sales kind of environment, they, they're not too pressured about the machines and they might drop them. You know, it just happens, yeah. Uh, and being able to monitor whether that disk is that becoming unreliable and from there creating an instant ticket in, 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 our, in, in our system to be able to proactively say, hey, that disk is failing, call the user, organize for the Dell engineer to come to site the following day, bang, swap out that hard disk, again, minimizing the disruption uh, to that end user. It's just being proactive in the service. Is any other examples like that, Adam, you can think of? Yeah, yeah, that, that smart disk, um, smart disk monitoring is, is quite handy like that. Um, it, it, can be, it can be a number of things that can trigger it um, and we, we can set it up. So if uh, a service is um, running slow or um, if access to a specific system is is taking longer than it should, we can be we can be triggered on that and that can generate a ticket within the system and uh, and they, they will proactively get a call from the service desk going, hey, we've spotted a problem. 
Yeah, and I, th I think for us, that's part of our secret sauce is being able to, because everybody's now working from home, being able to monitor that device sitting on that, you know, the corner of somebody's uh, kitchen table is so powerful that we can reach out and look after that. Minutes and 35 seconds, 10 minutes and 35 seconds into setup after turning the device on and we're at a desktop. We can see messages popping up saying that things are being configured still, but there we go. So on the desktop, we can see Google Chrome is installed. So that's one of the applications that was installed machine wide. Um, the other one was the RMM client and the machine, the, the one that we waited four minutes for, uh, four and a half minutes for was actually the Office Suite installing. Um, so the office suite took four and a half minutes to install. We'd have been at this point four and a half minutes earlier if I hadn't set the office suite to install. So let's close down Teams. And we'll have a look at the start menu. And we can see Access is there, Teams is there, Excel's there. And the shortcuts will appear shortly. And then we're saying, we can see that one of the settings I said we'd set was that um, the OneDrive would automatically sign in and sync devices and sync the desktop, for instance. And you can see some documents have arrived and a folder has arrived on my desktop that's synced down from OneDrive. And there we are. We're good to go. You saw that um, Teams had signed in. Um, and if I open Word, let's see, give it a second. We can see that my user account is signed in, so it um, it knows who I am. It will pull in my documents, etc. No need to do anything else other than that. Um, what it's also done is, if we look up at the RMM tool, and I'm hoping it's appeared for the user. Now let's look at the other one. has registered as a refresh. There we go. So the device has appeared in our RMM tool straight away, which gives remote access, but it also gives remote monitoring of the device. Don't know if I've been a bit too fast for it. Looks like I have. We'll give that a second. Um, things we can see when we come over here now, we can look at the list of devices, Windows devices. We can see our devices down there. It is compliant. The last time it last checked in, the user that checked in on it, um, we can click on that and it shows more details. Um, all those bits and pieces are there, but we can also look at the hardware specifications to check on those. We can see the apps that are being installed on it, and you can see that these are the apps that were installed. Um, this one, for instance, this is an, an, an odd fun one for you. So this is a required uninstall. So by default, they come, the laptops come with the cloud version of Office installed, so some shortcuts to the cloud. This removes them. Um, and that's part of the process that we can do. Um, and we can see the device configuration, what configuration policies are applied to it. We can uh, look at device compliance and see what compliant policies there are applied to it. Um, and as I said, we can look at every app that's on the device, um, not necessarily just the ones that we've in included, so that the coverage is there, it's, it's quite powerful. Let's go back here and see whether this has checked in properly yet. Ooh. There we go. So we can see that it's in, it's monitoring the system. Um, it's doing a, a bunch of stuff where we can monitor, we set alerts. So if the hard drive gets low, if the CPU is being used too much for too long, um, 
all those kinds of bits and pieces we can monitor using this system. It also gives us a remote control access of the device when necessary. Um, and that can be set up in whichever which way you want it set up, uh, be that we can break straight in without the user knowing or without the user acknowledging, um, or we can click a button and the user has to acknowledge our access before we do so, um, depending on the requirements. Okay, so one of the other things we can do is we can add software to the device on the fly. And the way we do that is via group membership so the user so let's find the user and we'll add them to another group to uh, deploy some extra software so if i look at the list of groups this user is member of so let's add a membership and let's go for uh, let's add seven zip and we'll add oh, where is it something small zoom there we go select those they get added to the user. And what we'll do now is we'll force the resync. Um, it would happen within half an hour anyway, but I don't want you hanging on for half an hour. So we'll find the device. We'll click the sync button. And this will do a sync of the permissions to the device and it should install that software. Um, we can go through the other buttons that are on this screen that are of interest. Um, we have the option for an autopilot reset. So what that does is it basically forcibly um, goes in, uh, updates all the device, all the software on the device um, and ensures that everything is installed or uninstalled that it should be. <clears throat> we have the option for fresh start, which is if we're going to hand the device to somebody else, say somebody else in the same department, so it required all the same software, we can hit fresh start that wipes all the user information off the device, but doesn't actually wipe the device. Um, we can then pass that device to another user. We can, of course, force a restart of the device. We can force a scan, there's quick scan and full scan. Um, we can rename devices, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, uh, the other bits of interest is the, the wipe button. Um, and that's the powerful one. That's the one that essentially initiates a full reinstall of Windows um, remotely. Um, and the device gets back to the state that we store it in when we started this process. Um, <clears throat> so it's, uh, yeah, that's, a, that, that's, that's one to be aware of. Um, if we're going to completely reassign the device to a different user um, in a different department, <clears throat> maybe even in a different country, we could go in, we could hit the wipe button, we could then go in and change the group by tag on the device and it would end up um, having a different configuration on it. So I'm just going to initiate that again because I haven't seen anything drop out to the laptop. You should see some shortcuts up here when it does it. I think it's quite impressive, 10 and a half minutes to get from turning the device on to it being ready to use. I mean, I was given 20 minutes. I think 10 and a half is, uh, is not bad at all. I initiated an install of Zoom and 7-Zip. You can see from the laptop itself that, seven, that Zoom is there and the screen up Above it, which is the uh, endpoint manager screen, you can see it's waiting for install status. So it's double checking that it's installed before it goes, yay, I'm all happy. So let's see if I can force a refresh of that. Still waiting for it. I wonder if 7-Zip's installed yet. I expect to see the icon. Yeah, the, the icon's there. So it's just not yet reported back that it's installed. Um, so yeah, really powerful. And we can see on the RMM tool that it is now there. We can use this tool to, like I said, not to only to remote access systems, but we can set up monitors to monitor certain things. We can look at the software that's installed to make sure that it only has the applications and software that you want it to have. We can look at CPU usage and stuff like that. Um, it's quite a, it's a, it's a really good tool. 
and we can look at alerts, system alerts, so that we get notified of them. We can get notified, we can set up alerts for our ticketing system. So if the hard drive on your laptop runs out of space, we get to know about it before it starts doing anything bad to your systems. OK, I suppose the last thing that you want to see is what happens when we want to reallocate the device. And this is where I've already shown you that there are some buttons at the top here. So we can do a reset if we just want to clean the device. We can do a fresh start if we're going to hand the device to somebody else and they want the same software retained. So remembering that this will retain the device applied software, not the user applied software. So in this instance where we put a Zoom and 7-zip, if I were to do a fresh start, it would remove Zoom and 7-zip um, because they're not for the other user. That's assuming they're not for the other user. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a wipe. So this will initiate a full Windows restall, reinstall on the laptop um, and re-register it with the system. Press the button. Press that we want to continue if something goes wrong and we're off. And there we go, that's the device restarting. I haven't touched it. This has come from the endpoint manager system telling it to do a essentially a factory reset reset from uh, the cloud. We'll wait for it to get to the next machine and I'll sign off. And there we are, preparing to wipe the device. Resetting. Fantastic. Have a good one. Leave you to it. Got to say, Adam, I would, uh, you, you're telling me 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to start setting you more complicated, more, more challenging target. 10 minutes, 40 seconds. You duped me. I thought I'd set you a proper challenge. Uh, afraid not, afraid not. And if you remember, I, I said if I wasn't dropping out of office, it would have been done in about four minutes earlier than that. You know, uh... You're coming across a bit smug now, Adam. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey, that's brilliant. Mate. That, that's really good. Uh, lots of moving parts, uh, but hopefully it helped everybody visualise uh, what the art of the possible is there, definitely. OK, we're wrapping up. So for those of you that uh, attend our webinars on a regular basis, you know that we run these What's New in Microsoft 365 on a monthly basis. The next one is 8th of July. We're going to focus on Teams. We normally do focus on Teams, or they're mainly Teams-centric because that's the heart of uh, how a user becomes more productive in an organisation in terms of collaborating and communicating with colleagues, partners, et cetera, et cetera. So we do focus on that. Uh, I am going to draw in uh, how we use Teams to be that information cockpit. So we're going to look at, for example, there's a, some new technologies around SharePoint, so new, some new additions around SharePoint. For example, uh, uh, in, uh, integrating your intranet, your SharePoint intranet into Teams. So you don't have to shell out a Teams to go to SharePoint to find your intranet. All integrated as so you stay in that one cockpit, which is Teams. Anyway. If that's your kind of thing, we'd love to see you on the 8th of July. We'd also like to hear from you whether there are other topics you'd like to cover. Uh, and uh, watch this space when the invite uh, drops into your inbox. Now, that's it. Hopefully you've got great value. The time you've invested, you've had a good return out of that. If there's any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, Carla will be in contact, just following up anyway. And uh, hey, have a great day. Thanks for your attendance. Cheerio. Bye-bye.